Let me show you something. Check it out. This is my new Hexapod or generic robot controller board. Uh, it's a rather simple little device. It consists of an ESP32, some power management circuitry and a buffer slash line driver for talking half duplex protocol to the Dynamixel servos. I made this as a replacement board for the old OpenCM904 board, which is basically an Arduino. So we can talk more about this later in the video. Uh, first I'm going to show you some of the new features I've added to the simulator. Once I figured out that uh, all the math and forward and inverse kinematics in this thing was uh, totally generic, I um, started toying with the idea of uh, making other kinds of pods. So this is no longer a hexapod simulator, it's a generic pod simulator. So you can have uh, pentapods, let's see if I can find one. Yeah, here I have a pentapod, we can try and make it walk. Uh, let's, see, let's try the angle, angle 60, sorry, type it. Start. So here you can see a five-legged robot. Uh, of course, this can't use tripod gate, so it's kind of stuck to a wave gate. I also made a heptapod in case you want a robot with seven legs. Uh, see if I can find that. Yeah, here you have a heptapod. Um, See if we can make it work. Walk. Let's try a vector. 50, 20. Start. And of course, it, since this has an odd number of legs, it's also constricted to the wave gate. So I thought it would be fun. Uh, of course, octopod uh, would be cool. That means you can make a truly spider like robot with. Uh, three legs and two larger kind of hind legs propel it forward. So, uh, so far the code is um, restricted to having legs evenly spaced around the body, but uh, the math don't care. Um, I could of course made kind of a layout editor in case you want three legs on one side and three legs on the other. Uh, that shouldn't be any problem. Uh, it's probably easier to do it uh, in a definition file than to do it interactively. So I've also added the possibility of uh, um, saving and loading robot definitions. So you can change the lengths of the legs or default angles and so on. Let's see if we can... Let's see... Set... Uh, TBR length. Try and shorten the the TBR segment to let's say 50. Ah, we have a really robot with really short legs. Maybe that was a bit extreme. 80. We can set TBR angle to 140. So when you're satisfied with your hexapod or pentapod or heptapod, you can just save it by typing the save command. H2. And it's saved. Um, yeah. Uh, we can try and reload one of the previous definition definitions. This one. Uh, where the legs, by sheer coincidence, is totally identical to my robot arm. Um, so what I did next was I included a dynamic cell library in the code. So I could stream servo angles via the OpenCM904 
from the simulator to this uh, robot leg slash robot arm um, just to see if it would move according to the simulator and it does and I'll show you um, but before I do that uh, what other stuff um, yeah um, I mentioned this brand new board my control board uh, this has lots of wireless capabilities so it can connect to my network uh, this has to be tethered to the robot so using this thing uh, I'm limited to streaming servo angles or servo parameters through a tether uh, I don't really want to do that uh, I would like to use the wireless capabilities of uh, the ESP32 so I made a small server initially I was thinking uh, I could run the whole thing on this but why should I do that when I can use a much more powerful computer with sensors using sensors that are not even on the robot I can use cameras or other kind of sensors in the room to control it um, and run the controller on a powerful PC and then I can just stream servo angles or robot parameters uh, through the controller board so the only thing this really needs to do is to implement a simple UDP server so uh, I'm not finished programming this yet, but I made a simple UDP server in Golang. Uh, and this, um, I call it dummy robot server. So it opens a port on my local machine and just listens for UDP packets. So I can try and run it. Dummy robot server. So nothing is happening yet. Uh, if we go back to the simulator, there is one definition, robot definition. Uh, once this start moving, starts moving, it will stream all the server angles uh, to the server. Um, so we can set a stride. Angle 60. And I can connect to my local host on port 1337. And when we start it, it should start streaming parameters. Yeah, it's already streaming, but nothing is moving. Yeah, there the robot is moving. And it's streaming the, the parameters to the server. So that means I can offload a heck of a lot of computing to a really powerful device and just have a kind of receiver board. Maybe it's some other simple functionality on the robot itself. I always knew that the art of computer programming would come in handy someday. This is the test setup. Uh, I have this virtual hexapod here and this physical representation of that leg. Um, the OpenCM904 is connected to my computer via a USB cable and I hooked it up to a battery pack. So first thing is to give the virtual hexapod a command to move. So we say that uh, should move in a circle, stride angle 50. And we say start. So now this has started moving. Uh, this appears as the Robotis virtual COM port on serial port number 4. So I tell the simulator to open the servo port. Open servo port. Four, and when I press enter, this should start moving in sync with that leg. Nothing. Ah, maybe I should switch it on. Yay! 
huge success. So here you can see it's following the movement of this one. Uh, next steps, how to make a UDP server that runs on this, that should be easy enough. And then I have to bolt this board onto my brand new baby Exabot, which is running 18 Dynamixel XL320 miniature servos, which are really nice. Uh, once this is uh, walking, I'm satisfied. Big Daddy is up next. This is a bigger hexapod. Uh, it's using the AX12 servos, weighs a few kilos. Uh, it's running another version of my uh, robot controller board. Uh, it also has an inertial measurement unit and some NRF stuff. Uh, it's the same board that's running on my balance bot. Um, yeah, so this is the fun part. Uh, of the project and the reason I started this simulator was that I wanted to make Big Daddy move. I wasn't able to before. Um, yeah, closing comments. Um, I have a question for the Robotis distributor in Europe, which is Mauser Electronics. Um, a couple of years ago I ordered uh, 20 of these hobbyist level XL320 servers from me. Happy customer, no problem. Been enjoying them ever since. Uh, when I try to reorder from you, the product page has a shipping alert. Uh, it says, due to government regulations, Mauser is unable to sell this product in your country. Now, I'm living in Norway. We're a NATO member. Not suspecting that this is kind of a military device. Uh, I don't really see why you won't ship this product to Norway. It's not even originated in the US. It's a Korean made servo. Why won't you sell them? It's crazy. I tried talking to your support staff and they weren't very helpful. Uh, they basically just reiterated the shipping alert to me and said, sorry, uh, please fix. This is embarrassing. Um, I can always get these servos from third-party distributors in the UK or Germany, but it's more expensive. So Mauser, I would really like to be able to continue being a happy customer and order from you, so please fix this issue. It's got to be a mistake of some sort. Yeah, that out of the way. So next steps is programming, making stuff work, and then open sourcing the project. Okay, until next time. Bye.